Thanks, brother Ralph. So our subject is uh, tentative justification. Uh, justification is a term that implies that there is a set of rules or some kind of law that was broken and needs to be corrected. But there are two facets to that definition. Someone can say he justifies his action and gives an explanation that yes, he broke the law, but because the law doesn't cover all eventualities, he was justified in doing what was necessary at that time. So maybe an example would be like somebody kayaking in a bay and all of a sudden the kayak flips, the wave came, he flips and he's in the water drowning. And there's a sign on the beach, no swimming. But the fellow who saw the other events was happening there, he jumped to the water and swims. So, and saved the pe other person's life. So he broke the law, but the situation required an immediate uh, remedy. And the only one who uh, came out with was one which broke the law, but saved the day. The other facet of justification would be when the law was broken and action is required to rectify the mistake. A typical example of that would be an old weight scale, where on one side would be, for example, a speeding ticket, and on the other side, a few hundred dollar bills or a check to make the scale balanced. Those few hundred dollars may seem to be not much, but it cuts to the disposable income and a few tickets may empty wallet in no time. The price of the ticket is high enough to make individual think twice before speeding again. That process of balancing we call justification. This is the definition the Bible uses when it talks about justification. So there is a broken law and a process of correcting is called justification. According to the Bible, pending on a time of human history and the people to whom may it applies, we have four different types of justification. It's a typical, tentative, vitalized, and actual. Then our subject, is a tentative justification. Tentative means not fully work out or developed. So we may, so we are not quite justified, not quite justified yet. So for example, here is the house. What is the house? House is the structure which provides the shelter from elements. We spend some time there, we eat there, we, yeah, we, we enjoy the aesthetics of the house and so on. But if you look inside the house, there was no electricity. The cupboards are, don't have a countertop. There is uh, no appliances. The walls are not painted yet. But does that meet criteria of shelter? Yes, it does. It's a house. But can we fully sa be satisfied living there? No, it, it does work, but not, it's not fully functional. The other example of the being tentative or not fully developed would be like a spare tire in a vehicle. We got those you know, new, uh, new cars, we got the smaller tires, uh, kind of, they call them donuts. It's not a regular tire, but it's a donut tire, smaller one. When we install that, it's smaller, the car, car is not balanced, but it gets us from place to place. We cannot develop the full spirit, spirit uh, I mean, uh, speed to get from A to B, but it, it works for a time being. So that's how we can portray that tentative definition. But what is the purpose of justification and why do we need it? As a Christians, we need justification to, 
to get access to God. Justification is beautifully described in Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, the justification comes by believing, by faith. But what that faith implies? We have to believe that Jesus died for us. And if we believe in that, we have to first acknowledge that we are sinful. And the sins we, we could be erased by Jesus' blood. And having that faith that he does cleanse us, we get peace with God. And that peace with God is essential because God needs someone to be on the same level as him. Like we have, we have to, what does that peace mean? That we can communicate, that we are not, we are, we can talk to each other. And look at how Bible describes God. He is holy. And in order for us to communicate, we have to be holy. Be holy because I, the Lord, am holy. And if we are covered with sins, we have to have that clothing, that white clothing which covers the sin, sins, and that brings us clean and we could communicate with God. The other example is the verse from Matthew. Therefore, you shall be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. So that way, the communication is restored. We may say justification comes by faith, but that allows us to communicate with God. He can be there for us in a time of need. And having peace with God makes us one of his children, so we can even call him Father. We need that justification to have a communion with him. But dear brethren, let us look at the history and how it all started, that we need that justification. So we look at the beginning, at the Adam and Eve. In the Bible, justification refers to the sin committed by our parents. Adam and Eve, they were put in the test and they failed. The test was not a challenging one, not a difficult one. They didn't require to perform any tasks, just stay away from one tree. There were many trees in the garden, but from that one, only one, you have to stay away from it. And that was the covenant or a contract, not to eat fruit from that tree. But what happened? They ate the fruit and that was sin. The covenant was broken. So wages of sin is death. And God said, the day you eat, the day you die. And Apostle Peter is saying that uh, one day is a thousand years and thousand years is one year. So when we look at Adam, he never made it to, to a thousand years. He, his life was 930 years. And the longest uh, living person, Methuselah, he didn't make it to the thousand either. But dear brethren, God loved man. He created him on his image and likeness. He invested so much in him, and now the things got wrong. So he prepared the way, a way out to correct the situation and balance the scale of justice. By doing this, he fulfilled the justice law. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. For as in Adam all die, so, it, so also in Christ all will be made alive. So that way, the justification was completed. The other verse, which would maybe describe that as well, is written in John chapter 3, verse 16. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So this way, man can be justified because Jesus Christ paid God the ransom. But that happened 2,000 years ago. And we should be free from that sin, from that curse, and we should have already everlasting life. But nothing happened. Why not? Jesus paid the price, the check was written, and handed over. But, dear brothers, it wasn't cast. God still got his, his check on his desk. So justification we got is not a full one, it's a tentative one. When we will see people coming from the grave, when we can see our, the little children we die in infancy coming back to us, and we can see our dear ones coming from graves, we could hug each other, that's one of the signs. When we can see the animals, wolf and sheep and lions, and the little child playing with lion, we know that the restitution came and that God's kingdom is fully. The resurrection and restitution are the key, key words. And then the justification will be fully implemented. But dear brethren, God is love. And so he provides temporary access to his throne of mercy by giving people some, some kind of justification. This process, would make them clean and acceptable in his eyes. And that is called tentative justification. The other way to introduce the tentative justification is to look at the divine plan of ages. This beautiful plan was drawn more than a hundred years ago. And uh, my brother, Russell and showing to us. So maybe most of us are familiar with that, but just to as a reminder, we will look at that. And we could see where the tentative justification is there. So basically it's a timeline from left to right. And uh, represents major events from the biblical, biblical point of view. It doesn't show the First World War or the Second World War. There is no time when Alexander the Great tried to conquer the world or Napoleon Bonaparte uh, invaded Moscow, Russia, and so on. But it shows creation of Adam. Major, in other biblical events, it's a flood here. Then, the last of patriarchs with, which die is Jacob. And then God starts to deal with Jews as a whole nation. That's we call that Jewish age. And then when Jesus came, came here, started the gospel age. And it goes all the way to his second coming. And then it starts the millennium age, a thousand years. Now there are in other lines here, the horizontal lines. This line, which Adam was created, is a line of perfection. And this is the line which represents also tentative, just, uh, tentative justification. This is, a, this is the line where you can communicate with God. We got a peace with God, like we read in the Romans, uh, letter to Romans. But the Adam sin, and it dropped to that line uh, R. That line R represents destruction, death. Condemnation. So Adam was created on that line and he was doing well for probably two years till he sinned, then he fell down to line R. And in patriarchal age here, we can see that little pyramid here, which represent patriarchs, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. God was dealing with them. Why? Because through faith, they arose from that line R and they were able to communicate with God. 
but there's nobody here in Jewish age. There was no tentative justification here. Closer to end of the Jewish age, this pyramid represents Jesus. He didn't need justification. He was perfect. And, but that, that line again represents the communication with God. So he was able to communicate with God. Now coming to the another period, so-called gospel age, we can see that pyramid uh, P, which represents the, I won't gonna represent all the parts of that pyramid, but that part P represents the mankind, which came to believe in Jesus. Those we called Christians. And they could come to this point when they believe like a jailer. What do I have to do, he asked Paul and Silas, to be safe? Safe from what? From sins. And they said, believe in Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. So that automatically put him here. And then that line carries on to a millennium. Now, to better describe that tentative justification through this period, there was a question asked by someone and they was posed to Brother Russell. And Brother Russell kind of in innovative kind of way came up with the answer that composed a conversation between, between God and man. And that way he tried to answer that fellow, what, can we, what the justification is. So I will paraphrase that, what Brother Russell said. So God is speaking to a man, draw unto me and I will draw unto you. Since you come to me, I will explain what is necessary to be my child. Now fellow is saying, yes, I would like to know the terms so I can receive your spirit and be joint heir with Jesus and God. But there are some terms and very strict rules. You must take your cross and follow, follow the master. You must give up all you have, even your life. Only then you can become part of the class I am calling now. And the fellow is answering, I am not ready to put up my life online. I have a family and many things on the go. I want to be cleansed from the sin and have a communion with Jesus. And God answers, that's fine. You will be tentatively justified and you won't be part of heavenly calling. So he's on the same level like a jailer, to believe and to be saved. Because if he would accept that calling, he would be higher up. He would receive the Holy Spirit, the Spirit begotten, like it shows on that line M. And then he would be part of that little flock or great company. But he declined that. The justification we have now is a tentative justification. We are somewhere here in the at beginning of the millennia. We may consecrate our lives, but we still, but we will not become spirit begotten. If anything, we may get better rewards than others. Dear brothers, we seen many times And we pray, forgive our sin as we forgive others. Our daily prayers express that quite well. So we don't for, if we don't forgive others, our sin stick with us. So we need to forgive other side. But some are saying, he or she hurt me so much. He or she take advantage of me and so on. But the Bible is saying, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So we should leave it that up to the Lord. Sometimes we make mistakes and hurt someone. We may say the wrong thing 
And now we don't know how to get out of this predicament. Brother is watching us. Neighbors are keeping eyes on us. And there is a God who saw everything. All those things are dragging us down. Thinking about it is holding us and we'll, we will stop from progressing in our lives. We want to serve others. We want to spread the truth. We want to please the Lord, but there is a ball and chain and we can't do nothing. Guilty feelings hang on us. We may think we are not worthy. We may wonder what other brothers are thinking about us. And we may fall into their depression. We are not making progress. If we cultivate thoughts about our bad experience, we are stuck. There's a ball and chain which hold us. But why? We have a redeemer who died for our sins. What we need to do is believe. Just believe in him and that his blood cleanses our sin and we can start again. And the Bible says, just man for so many times, but every time the Lord sets him up. We don't have to climb the mountains, perform some heavy tasks, or pay for it. It is a free grace from God Almighty. What we need to do is to believe and we will be saved. Remember the story about Jailer. There is another example I would like to bring to your attention. And that is kind of summarize the tentative justification. And there is a picture of a tabernacle on a desert. And if you can see the brethren here, the Jews were camping all around that, that court, courtyard. And like brother Adam was saying about this offering here, where you can see the goats coming and the bulls and some other animals coming to it, uh, to the tabernacle. And all those people were bringing them for, to sacrifice for the, for the guilt. If they commit a sin, depends how big was the sin, that big was the price. If it was bigger sin, bigger animals, moral price, maybe a little goat will do it. So that guilty man was coming and after giving his sheep or a cow to the priest as an offering, they were living cold, fully convinced that their sins were forgiven. Yeah, he was feeling well. Yeah, now my sins are forgiven. I can start new life. I can start living again. I don't have that guilty conscience. But look at what Apostle Paul is saying. It is impossible for the blood of bull and goats to take away the sins. So what was that for? That offering was to make them feel better, to make them feel good so they can carry on with their lives. But they didn't know exactly that that was what was happening, where the sins are still kind of written somewhere. But that symbolized and also will give them that warm feeling. And they could carry, carry on and do the good things in life to others and so fulfill the Ten Commandments without, uh, yeah, without that guilty feeling. And that is the tentative justification, is to keep us afloat. We are going through the same process. We are justified in our minds and we can carry with even further, even to consecration, because we are living in millennial age, we can consecrate, may not be the same reward as those who consecrate in gospel age, but nevertheless, it is something to make us feel better. We live in a millennium, according to the chart, but the situation in the world does not meet the condition set for the millennium kingdom. 
it seems like the time stopped for a while. We don't know why. Maybe God wants to make a certain number of epiphany campers to fulfill his list. Or maybe some other prophecies needs to be fulfilled before we can see the lame walking, the blind seeing, the, the dumb singing. There's a lots of upheaval in the world. Prophecies are coming to life. The olive trees are blooming. Babylon is getting exposed. And nations are set against nations. The time is right. We just need to be patient and carry on with our consecration, which is based on a tentative justification. Tentative justification is not an act, but a continuous process to stay connected to our God. This process practice over and over again will make us perfect. And that applies now in a full millennium. Dear brother, I hope that explanation of the, that is justification was helpful to you. And may the Lord add his blessing. Thank you.